This interview is being conducted for St John Scotland, 75 years of making a difference. My name is Dr Sue Morrison and the respondent is Carol Campbell. This is the 2nd of December 2021 mm -hmm. and the interview is taking place in Stranra. Thank you very much for agreeing to be interviewed, Carol. You're welcome. For the record, would you please confirm your full name? It's Carol Ann Campbell. Thank you. And what, if you don't mind telling me, <laughs> What is your age or just your year of birth? 71. I'm 71. Where were you brought up, Carol? Kirkcudbury. And where do you live now? I live at Ochen Malg. Very few people know that. Could you yeah. explain where that is? It's between Stranra and Port William. On the coast. And how long have you been there? We've only been there five years nearly. But we've always had a caravan there before, and then we had a lodge. Then when we retired, we decided we'd live there. So that's where we live. We bought a new one in. It's lovely. That's you and your husband? Yes. Lovely. Um, could you tell me a wee bit about your, your, yourself, your background? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm married. I have four children one of whom sadly we lost and then we have ten grandchildren and four great-grandchildren and a house full. I've spent my years predominantly working in the haulage industry and I've loved it. So now just a different chapter opens. Um, I don't know what else you'd like to know. What was your job in the haulage, in haulage industry? Well I, I yeah, I worked my way through the haulage industry, to be quite honest, but my job in the last 20 odd years has been running the company and it's um, something I like, something I enjoyed. But funny enough, I didn't miss when I retired and I thought I would. So it's, you know, every day was a challenge, but, but it was a good challenge. You must have seen some changes during that time. Huge changes, huge changes. Um, in the initial, in my initial days in Hollage, there was a, a scant disregard for the law, which led to many, many people losing their lives and, and things that could have been prevented. And over the last 30 years, I have seen a great change in tachygraph laws, enforcing them, and just treating the drivers with perhaps more respect. Um, than they got when they were, you know, when they first came into the world there. So, yes. You would know better than I um, why there is a driver shortage at the moment then. I don't think you'd want to record what I say because I would get in my soapbox. <laughs> I, I think the driver shortage is driven predominantly by customers' greed and employers' greed customer because he obviously wants to drive the price down, employer because he wants as much of a percentage profit as he can get and customers quite often run scared of um, other, other, other customers with the same brand you know so it, hauliers run scared of customers moving to another haulier, it's, it's a complex industry, much more complex than it is but I often described it in this way. When I came into Hollage, a driver was the top end of the manual scale. He bought his council house, paid his mortgage, got himself a bungalow, had a new car every couple of years. And in the last 15 to 20 years, the wages have decreased so badly that people left the industry. And that's just where it is. I think it'll come back. In fact, I see it coming back. I obviously still have a, a foot in the door that keeps me where I am, but um, it'll take a long time for it to come back up. But it's not nearly as bad as everybody says. You know, there's a shortage of a lot of industries, isn't there? Um, so I, I do believe it'll come back, and I do believe that customers have learned their lesson on it, um, and I do believe that the owners have definitely learned their lesson on it. It's a sad day in life when somebody that maybe has four or six or ten lorries 
pays more than somebody that has 40 or 50 or 100, you know. That's where it was. So I'll not go on any longer because <laughs> I'll bore you to death. No, thank you for your insight. That was really interesting. Uh -huh. Thank you. That's, mm -hmm. um, so you retired when? Nearly four years ago. And what have you been doing with yourself since? Well, the, the first couple of years, I suppose, took me to settling in, getting used to having time to myself, and I like gardening. We also quite like travelling, and um, I take myself off to Spain for the first three months every year. Couldn't do it last year, but I hope to do it this year. And really, it did take me two years to settle in, and then I looked around for something to do and I, I read actually about St John's in the paper and they were needing drivers and when I phoned Willie and met him. It was quite, it was very interesting actually. And I actually think they give a good service to people that need it. So, um, so between that and uh, I have a neighbour that I'm friendly with, we go to the gym, we, we go to the keep fit classes, we do walking and it's lovely. It is lovely, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> Lovely. That's only to look forward to. Yes. Um, when you first met Willie and he described the job, um, what, what did you think? What, what I, th I think it's a great service that St John offer. And I'm, qu I'm really quite proud to be part of it. it it's, um, it's something that's lacking. I mean, I don't know how much you know this area, but it's a long way to any of the major hospitals. And there are people who just simply probably wouldn't know where to turn to, to get there. So I think it's great. And Willie really explained it, and you know, he was very, very open and honest and, and, and welcoming. Yeah. And he seems to do a really good job, doesn't he? He's, um, it's very easy to talk to and get on with, yes. How did you find driving the car the first time? Fine, because I've only ever driven the automatic because I have an automatic. <laughs> so, but again, I would drive a, a manual if I had to, so no, fine, yes. But, you know, there's a bit of trepidation, but once we, we got underway, we were grand. Your first um, actual job as it was, your, uh, your first trip. Mm -hmm. um, from where to where? From Surar to Edinburgh. Did you know the route? Yes. Yes, I did. And uh, how did you find the patient? She was, it was, she was very talkative. I suppose she was maybe a bit nervous, although she'd been in Edinburgh several times, so, and this was just going up to have treatment. So, no, she was very nice. And I've since met her in the community since then, so it's good. Did you feel at all nervous or unsure about how to speak with her? No. I can talk to most people. Um, I, I, in my job I talked a lot to, across the board, so no, I can talk to most people. And I, I simply said to look, if you want to talk, talk. If you don't want to talk, don't talk, it's fine. You know, if you want to stop, we'll stop. But she's, no, they were fine. They've, they've all been very well, very good. How many trips have you done? Because you're quite new, aren't you? I think I've done five. F five, yes. And um, where have those trips been to? Well, I've been to Edinburgh twice, and I've been to Dumfries thrice. What other hospitals would you possibly need to go to? Well, I believe you can go to the Beatson in Glasgow or Ayr. And I don't know about Kilmarnock, but I, there's Ayr, Glasgow, Edinburgh and Dumfries. And do you know the routes? Yes. Have you, do you just know them because you've travelled them before? I know them because I've travelled them before. I do use the sat now because roads change, but I, I do know the routes and I'm quite comfortable with them. Yes. Excellent. Um, Carol, could you tell me what you knew about St John's Scotland beforehand? Very little. Um, I'd heard of it, obviously, and I'd seen their cars, 
predominantly at Dumfries Hospital, if, if I was down, um, but very little. And I'm sure there's an awful lot more to it than what I, I know even today. Because yes, I know in this area we do cancer patients only, but I think out with this area they do general patients. And um, I also know that they help run the palliative centre in Stranra, and I think the cancer walk-in, drop-in centre. But other than that, not a lot. I know it's an order of chivalry because um, I would think in the, the past some of the family have been slightly connected to it, but really, I'd be interested to know more. Good. <laughs> Watch this page. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would. I think it's, uh, they don't sell themselves. That's something they don't do, you know, and I think it's... It's nice to be modest, but I think more people could take advantage of, of what they have to offer. But I'm a new boy in the door. You know? mm -hmm. It is interesting though, sir. What else do you think they could do to promote themselves in this area? I think there are a lot of people who just simply don't know that the service exists. Now, I don't know whether that's through the hospital not um, offering the service or whether people are shy to ask of the service because sometimes older people are shy to ask you know and, and I think maybe just a more general knowledge but again in Australia loads of people may know we're relative newcomers to the area so but I do think it is a service that maybe Maybe the health board and the, and the local GPs could could forward. Excellent, you know, thank you. Yes. Um, do you know anything about the fundraising events? No, but I don't know anything about the fundraising events. I've read recently in the emails that came through that you intend to have um, 75th celebrations, etc. But no, I, I know very little about it. Um, is there anything you would like to say about St John Scotland or the Patient Transport Service? Anything I'd like to say? Mm -hmm. I think I've said it. I think it's a good service. I think it's a great service. And I know that it, you know, there's few of what I've done, but they're all very appreciative of it. And that's good, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's terrible if you're sitting at home worrying about how you're going to get to hospital. And, and funny enough, I, I stopped at the bus stop one day in Dumfries. A man was waiting for the Stranraer bus. And I was, I was doing some shopping. And he said, oh, this is awful. I had to come up this morning and I had to get out from the hospital to here and then I had to get back to Stranraer. And this was before I knew about St John's. And I thought, it is awful. It is awful. I mean, that, I felt that man maybe should have been offered so helped by his GP or his consultant. Um, but that's really my view on it. I think make it more available if, po if possible. You know, everybody has constraints in what they can do. And Willie explained when they bought the second car it was because they were so busy, so that's good. Yes. But money has to come from somewhere to, to do it. Yes. How would you sum up your feelings about St John Scotland? I think it's good service. I'd like to know more about it. I'd like to see it promoted, as I said. And um, everybody's been very friendly. Very friendly. Thank, Thank you, you, Carol. Thank you. Everything else. Thank you very much. Uh -huh.